Hey guys and welcome back, I'm Sybin here for the Ether Hub, bringing you a lore crash course to get you up to date on everything Vorthos heading into Amonkhet. Amonkhet lore starts tomorrow here on the channel and it's best if we're all on the same page. This video's gonna be moving a little quick so try to keep up if you can. The Gatewatch, a group of planeswalkers bound together to fight evil along with their quote unquote evil new member Liliana Vest, just finished killing two world eating titans and trapping a third one in a moon. Now they're kinda moping around back at Jason's place on Ravnica. Gideon, all sad and stuff, puts out the multiversal version of flyers in order to find people who need their help. And finally, they get their first customer, a Vidalkin from the plane of Kaladash. With his paper pushing attitude, Davin Bond wishes to hire the Gatewatch to clear out some rebels looking to disrupt their inventors fair. Gideon and the others are kinda not cool with getting involved in plain politics so they decided to sit this one out. But Chandra Nalar, upon hearing the name of her old home world, being a hothead loses her cool and storms off with Liliana Vest following behind, forcing the rest to chase after her. Now on Kaladash, Chandra seeks out the Renegades, the group disrupting the consulate-run Inventors Fair. They were the freedom fighters her parents once belonged to, before they croaked, so she'd help them out if she could. Lead after nightclub dance party after lead, the two find their renegade contact, which, surprising to her but not to us, turns out to be Chandra's not-so-dead mother, Pia Nalar, who now happens to be Renegade Prime. Cue emotional, touching moment between mother and daughter. After the waterworks, Pia is captured by another familiar face, only this one's less tear-jerking, the planeswalker Tezzeret. Liliana recognizes him and knows he's up to no good, because of his uh, extensive work history with Nico Bolas. They fight, but end up losing because the Gatewatch isn't together, which is the only way anything seems to get done anymore, resulting in Pia being captured while Tezzeret escapes. They get some help from a fancy rich Aetherborn and a kind old lady with a lot of mechanical pets, but the most helpful person, or cat, was a Johnny Goldmane. As Nissa, Chandra, and Mrs. Pashiri, the kind old lady, are trapped in a prison filling with deadly gas, the Leonin springs forward, setting them free. Apparently, he's been friends with Pashiri ever since he came to Kaladesh while tracking Tezzeret, fearing he's doing, well, exactly what he's doing, working for Nicol Bolas. The rest of the Gatewatch finally make their grand appearance on Kaladesh. Gideon becomes uncomfortably known as Beefcakes, and everyone starts to plan against Tezzeret. P and Nalar is set to duel Tezzeret in an arena, but it's more a fancy execution than anything else. And of course, just before the final blow is struck, the Gatewatch reveal themselves and attack. Of course, this is only the first half of the block, so Tezzeret escapes, and uses the distraction to enact the next part of his dastardly plot, confiscating all the marvelous inventions at the fair, along with their inventors. Ba ba ba! Entering Aether Revolt, the consulates are emboldened by the command of Tezzeret as the entire city goes into curfew mode. The Gatewatch and the Renegades again get more help from the fancy Aetherborn Yaheni and another, Gonti, a crime lord with a fancy heart. All the while, Tezzeret is seeking what he came to Kaladash for, a device which can transport matter across the Bind Eternities, and it seems an elf named Rashmi has invented just that. The friend of Sahili Ray, which is the only relevant part of that character, is then forced to make a super big version of her prize winning invention. The Gatewatch and friends take control of an Aether Hub, channel plug there, and use it to power their skyship, the Heart of Kirin, starting what is now known as OP Mardu Vehicles. The Consulate don't like that, so they attack back with everything, the always smart Davin Bond sending Baral to split up the Gatewatch's forces. Baral is the officer who killed Chandra's father, and tried to kill her, so of course Chandra would take the bait. With her and Nyssa running off, the Consulate deal the Renegades their biggest defeat, and reclaim the Aether Hub, but hey, at least Baral was arrested. Panic mode sets in, Jace becomes a swashbuckling pirate, they recruit some street racing crows, and everything gets a little hectic. Communications are cut, so Jace does the sensible thing, attack the consulate fleet and flagship in the hopes that the rest aboard the Heart of Karen see and take advantage. Nice plan. Of course it works. Our heroes vie for one last hurrah, attacking the spire where Tezzeret is housing the planar bridge. Oh, and by this point, Rashmi escapes like 007 with some of their help and told them everything that's going on. They plan on shoving the Hope of Gieper right on up the device's exhaust pipe, but that plan is ruined again thanks to Dov and Bon. So now what? Of course, the answer is throw a couple planeswalkers in there and let them do it personally. Liliana Vess is sent in to distract Tezzeret, who apparently isn't as cunning as he first appeared. Oh, and she manages to make the only zombies on the planet of Kaladesh. Yay! Chandra and Gideon arrive in their little pod, Chandra burns the planar bridge apart, and Gideon... hugs her? Tezzeret escapes, but not before, in classic villain fashion, revealing all of his plans regarding working for Nicopolis and the plane he currently is living on, Amonkhet. Liliana knows Amonkhet, one of her demon masters resides there, meaning there's more to be done there than just hunt down a dragon planeswalker. 
near the end here, everyone's concerned about their next move, they celebrate the death of Yahini because Aetherborn are strange, and they argue over what to do next. Johnny seems reasonable when he asks everyone to find more allies rather than charge in head first without a plan, but of course Wizards of the Coast can't wait another two months before the next set, so everyone ignores their new friend and goes anyway, ditching him like the smelly kid your parents force you to hang out with. Not a good first impression for the new Gatewatch member. Outside of that, we have a lot of relationship and character building, Chandra again cries with her mother, and has even more awkward encounters with not only Nyssa, but Gideon as well. Yeah, that's a recipe for disaster later down the road. And everyone is set for their next adventure on Amon Ket. Whoo, and that's basically everything you guys need to know from Kaladash slash Aether Revolt heading into our next block of lore. Yes, I rushed through a lot there, but hey, that's why I make more in-depth videos on the lore of MTG, so you guys can go back and get the full sense of it whenever you like. For now, we're gearing up for all the awesome lore and giveaways to come in Amonkhet, and I'm happy to bring you guys all of it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this summary, remember to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on the Ether Hub.